For number five, we want to draw these curves, um, find the area bounded between them, and then revolve this area about the y-axis. So let's begin by drawing our first curve, x is equal to 2 square root of y. Um, now if this is a, a little bit confusing in how to draw it, let's just rearrange it because this is, this is pretty easy. So we have x is equal to 2 square root of y. Um, so when we Let's just isolate it in terms of y, right? So x over 2 is equal to root y, and then we square both sides. So we have that y is equal to x squared over 4. So this is really just the, po the parabola, right? But we're considering just the positive root. Um, so that's the easiest way for us to, to draw it. Because when we take the root... Uh, we have a positive and a negative root that would describe the entire parabola. So we're just talking about the positive root here. Um, so we'll have, let's draw, let's draw our um, graph, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'll do the same here. So we're drawing the positive um, positive side of our parabola. So it goes it goes uh, zero zero, and then because it's x squared divided by four, right? The positive side. So for x equals one, it gives us uh, one quarter. So like this, for x equals two, it'll give us one. Uh, so it would open up kind of like this. Open up very wide, yeah. Okay, uh, so once we, once we have this, let us now draw the other curves. Uh, we'll draw the curve x is equal to 0, which is just the y-axis. So this is, our, this is our x is equal to 0. And lastly, we have our y is equal to 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah. y is equal to 9. And we can clearly see that the region bounded between these curves um, is this yellow area over here. Now, it does want us to revolve this around the, the y-axis, right? So it wants us to revolve it around here. This means that we are, uh, when we revolve it, we're going to have sections over here that look like, that look like disks. Um, I drew this rather poorly. Let's see. Yeah, that look like disks, like this. So, and when we sum up all these disks, uh, these disks have a tiny little volume that is our dy, right? Because you can think that this thickness over here, this is just our dy, which is like a piece of the y-axis. So because they do have a little volume to it, when uh, they're being multiplied by dy, whenever we sum up all of these through our integral, right? So we sum up from here all the way up to, to 9, we're going to have a volume. Um, so let's set this up. Our integral goes from, it begins at 0, and because we're integrating with respect to y, right, we're multiplying all of these by the thickness by a little dy. So we're going from 0 to 9. Um, and now it's interesting to notice that, do you see that our, our radius, because we're, we're summing up the area, right, the area of a disk. So the area of a disk is equal to pi r squared. However, our radius here is always changing. So for example, at this point, uh, it is bigger than the smaller radius, right? And if I were to draw an even bigger disk over here, you know, it's constantly changing. It's constantly getting bigger as I go up in the y-axis. So that way we can say that this is a function of y, right? Because it changes um, with respect to y. So we're going to express it in terms of y, which was already given to us. So 2, oh, uh, sorry. So that is the area, area is equal to pi times the radius here, which is 2 square root of y squared, because it's the radius squared. So once we do this, um, we're saying that the area is equal to pi, 2 squared is times 4, and then square root cancels out with the square, so 4y. 
Um, all right, so let's integrate this. I'm going to put the pi outside because it's a constant. Pi times um, 4y dy. So this is equal to, this is equal to pi times 4y squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 9, which is just equal to, let's see, um, pi times 4 over 2 times 81, uh, which is equal to, let's put that in, that's 81 times 2, right? So 162 pi. And we can say, because they don't give us units, we can just say that those are just generic uh, cubic units. So yeah, that is our integral. Uh, let me just clean this up. 162. Yeah. So all we did was we drew these curves, we found the area, uh, and then we revolved around the y-axis as it tells us to, and then we realized, hey, this makes disks, right? Um, and the radius of the disks, because we want to sum up these areas, the radius is always changing, and it changes as a function of y, so I'm going to set up my integral in terms of y.